Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. <clears throat> As today, we continue in our journey. Um, we're on day now 217 in Bible in a Year. As we go through the Bible, the greatest story ever told, the greatest love story ever told, the love story between God and God's people. Um, and first it starts with God's people, Israel, and then it starts with anyone and everyone who uh, who believes and trusts in God because Jesus comes and he opens um, his covenant wide open and that all might join him in everlasting this everlasting covenant, which we will talk about today. It was proclaimed first by the prophets, and then it comes into um, reality with Jesus. And so thank God for Jesus. Uh, today we're going to be reflecting on Isaiah 55 to 56, Ezekiel chapter 16, and Proverbs chapters 13 verses 1 to 4. So Isaiah 55 to 56, we hear God's promise to all, come receive bread without payment. It says in Isaiah 56, we hear the strangers are brought into the covenant. To everyone who worships the Lord as he desires, loves his names, keeps the Sabbath and hold fast to the covenant, the Lord says, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and the sacrifice will be accepted on my altar. Um, but more than anything, the sacrifice of their whole lives. As Isaiah 55, 8 to 9 proclaims, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Um, it reminds us to not think in the ways of man, but to uh, begin to try and see the ways of God and how God sees them. We begin to love as God loves when we begin to see from God's perspective. In Isaiah 55, 11, we hear the promise of God regarding the power of his word. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend and prosper in the things for which I sent it. Ezekiel chapter 16, we again hear the story of Israel who is represented by a newborn whom no one wanted. Israel is claimed by God and nurtured. Though Ezekiel, through Ezekiel, God uses the image of a woman whom he clothes with beauty and grace, fine linen and jewelry. But she becomes captivated by her own beauty. Though God makes her his own, she squanders this relationship and pursues other lovers. Her adultery is the image of idolatry. We can make idols of the blessings God has given us, but our idols end up giving us nothing. Only true God can have true love for us. At the end of Ezekiel 16, God proclaims that he will establish an everlasting covenant with his people. We see this reality expressed by Jesus at the Last Supper when he says, This chalice which is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Jesus has given us the house of prayer for all nations. The church will bring all into this saving covenant of relationship with God. In Proverbs 13, Solomon speaks to those who follow diligently in God's ways. He instructs um, the wise, saying, the wise uh, follow the instruction of their father, but not the mocker. Um, Rash speaking leads to ruin, and wise, therefore wise should guard their lips. And then lastly, the unfaithful crave violence, whereas the faithful crave the good. A sluggard craves, but that does not receive anything, and the diligent crave and are satisfied. So it's always good to be faithful to God and to be diligent in the ways in which we work um, We work for God and that our glory and praise comes for God. So let's follow together Isaiah chapter 55 and 56. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and your souls will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens 
are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for sowing and bread for eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of, instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for their Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Chapter 56 this is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, to them I'll give them, give within my temple and its wall a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I'll give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And foreigners will bind themselves to the Lord, to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifice will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Come, all you beasts of the field. Come and devour all you beasts of the forest. Israel's watchmen are blind. They all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. Each seek his own gain. Come, each one cries. Let me get wine. Let us drink our fill of beer. And tomorrow will be like today or even far better. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Ezekiel. Chapter 16. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were the rubed with salt or wrapped in claws. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for on the day you were born you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood, and as you lie there in your blood I said to you, Live! I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, you who were naked and bare. Later I passed by, and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corners of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the Sovereign Lord, and you became mine. I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointment on you. I clothed you with an, an embroidered dress and put leather sandals on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. I adorned you with jewels. I put bracelets on your arms and a necklace around your neck. I put a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine linen, costly fabric, and embroidered cloth. Your food were fine flour, honey, and olive oil. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. And your fame spread throughout the nations on account of your beauty. Because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declares the Sovereign Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. You lavished your favors on anyone who passed by and your beauty became his. You took some of your garments to make gaudy high places. 
where you carried on your prostitution. Such things should not happen, nor should they ever occur. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver, and you made for yourselves male idols, and engaged in prostitution with them. And you took your embroidered clothes to put on them, and you offered my oil and incense before them. Also, the food I provided for you, the fine flour, olive oil, and honey I gave you to eat, you offered his fragrant incense before them. That is what happened, declared the Sovereign Lord. And you took your sons and daughters whom you bore to me and sacrificed them as food to the idols. Was your prostitution not enough? You slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. In all your detestable practices in your prostitution, you didn't remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, kicking about in your own blood. Woe, woe to you, declares the Sovereign Lord, in addition to all your other wickedness, you built a mound for yourself and made a lofty shrine in every public square. At the head of every street, you built your lofty shrines and degraded your beauty, offering your body with increasing promiscuity to anyone who passed by. You engaged in prostitution with the Egyptians. Your lustful neighbors have provoked me in anger with your increasing promiscuity. So I stretched out my hand against you and reduced your territory. I gave you over to the greed of your enemies, the daughters of the Philistines, who were shocked by your lewd conduct. You engage in prostitution with the Assyrians too, because you are insatiable, and even after that you still were not satisfied. Then you increased your promiscuity to include Babylonia, a land of merchants, but even with this you were not satisfied. How weak-willed you are, declared the Sovereign Lord, when you do all these things acting like a brazen prostitute, when you build your mound at the head of every street and made it your lofty shrines. In every public square you were like a prostitute, because you scorn payment, you adulterous wife. You prefer strangers to your own husband. Even prostitutes receive a fee. But you gave gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to come to you from everywhere for your illicit favors. So in your prostitution, you are the opposite of others. No one runs after you for your favors. You are the very opposite, for you have given payment and none is given to you. Therefore, you prostitute, prostitute, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you poured out your wealth and exposed your nakedness, in your promiscuity with your lovers, and because of all your detestable idols, and because you gave them your children's blood, therefore I am going to gather all your lovers with among you whom found pleasure, those who loved as well as those who hated. I will gather them against you from all around, and will strip you in front of them, and they will see all your nakedness. I will sentence you to punishment of women who commit adultery and who have shed blood. I'll bring upon you the blood of vengeance of my wrath and jealous anger. Then I will hand you over to your lovers, and they will tear down your mounds and destroy your lofty shrines. They will sh strip you of your clothes, take your fine jewelry, leave you naked and bare. They will bring a mob against you and will stone you and hack you to pieces with their swords. They will burn down your houses and inflict the punishment on you in the sight of many women. I will put a stop to your prostitution. You will no longer pay your lovers. Then my wrath against you will subside, and my jealous anger will turn away from you, and I will be calm and no longer angry. Because you did not remember the days of your youth, but enraged me with all things, I will surely bring down on your head what you have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Did you not add lewdness to all the other detestable practices? Everyone who quotes Proverbs will quote this proverb about you, like mother, like daughter. You are the true daughter of your mother, who despised her husband and her children. And you are her true sister of your sisters, who despised their husband and their children. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria, who lives to the north of you and with her daughters. And your younger sister, who lives to the south of you with her daughters, was Sodom. You not only walked in their ways and copied their detestable practices, but in all of your ways you soon became more depraved than they. As surely as I live, declared the Sovereign Lord, your sister Sodom and her daughter never did what you and your daughters have done. Now this is the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and underconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore I did away with them, as you have seen. Samaria did not commit half the sins you did. You have done more detestable things than they, and have made your sister seem righteous by all the things you have done. Bear your disgrace, for you have furnished some justification for your sisters. Because your sins are more vile than theirs, they appear more righteous than you. So then be ashamed and bear your disgrace, for you have made your sisters appear righteous. 
However, I will restore the fortunes of Sodom and her daughter, and of Samaria and her daughter, and your fortunes along with them, so that you may bear your disgrace and be ashamed of all you have done in giving them comfort. And your sister Sodom with her daughter and Samaria with her daughter will return to what they were before, and you and your daughter will return to what you were before. You had not even mentioned your sister Sodom in the days of your pride, before your wickedness was uncovered. Even so, you are now scorned by the daughters of Eden, and all the neighbors and daughters of the Philistines, all those around you who despised you, you will bear the consequences of your lewdness and your detestable praxes, declares the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will deal with you as you deserve, because you have despised my oath and break my covenant. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth. I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed. When you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you and those who are younger, I'll give them to you as a daughter, but not on the basis of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am the Lord. Then when I make atonement for you for all you have done, you will remember and be ashamed, and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation, declares the Sovereign Lord. Here ends our second reading. Our last reading comes from Proverbs chapters 13, verses 1 to 4. A wise son heeds his father's instruction. But a mocker does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of his lips, a man enjoys good things, but the unfaithful have a craving for violence. He who guards his lips guards his life, but he who speaks rashly will come to ruin. The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Here ends our final reading. Um, yeah, Solomon speaks many wise instruction that if if he falls in his father's instruction that uh, that he is wise that uh, we don't want to be like the unfaithful who crave violence but like the faithful who crave good and who are satisfied when they work diligently with their hands not like the sluggard um, we also see here in Ezekiel um, it's a sobering image of Israel um, Represented as a wayward daughter, um, getting herself into much prostitution, not being paid, but paying for sex with other nations. Um, it's an it's an allegory, um, so it's not it's not uh, uh, literal, but it's an allegory of the way that Israel, if Israel was a wife, the way that Israel would be, which is extremely unfaithful and worse than all her neighbors even the neighbors that used to look really bad look tame compared to how bad israel had acted and then lastly we see in the book of isaiah we see some really beautiful beautiful words from god um, he first reminds his people that his ways are far above their ways and that um but god is he will go out in joy and be led forth in peace that uh, those who achieve his purposes will grow um, and live within his everlasting sign that he gives to his people uh, that they will not be barren um, as, but as God's people that if they seek the name of the Lord, if they worship him, that he will hold an everlasting covenant with them, that he will welcome all nations, not just some nations, all nations. He will give to them a holy mountain, uh, give them joy in his house of prayer, and that they, he will gather all the exiles from everywhere, gather them together in order that they might be his and that he might be their God and they might be his people. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture that God gives the people in Isaiah, through Isaiah. And may we also live within that promise that Isaiah gives um, as we give thanks to God that he has uh, given his covenant for us, his people, who are not his people, um, but he is uh, now opening his span, not only the people of Israel, but all the world, that all tribes might come to him. We thank him for this, and we come to him in prayer and thanks. Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory. Every single day we bring your word to you. As described in Isaiah, your word is living and effective. Your word accomplishes your will, and we are so grateful. 
we're so grateful that the word never comes back empty, but that it always uh, comes back with substance. Help us say yes to what your will for us is. Help us say yes to your word today. Help us say yes to you and your will for us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today in day 217. Have a blessed day. And I hope that you might be blessed by these words that we have read and that you might be a blessing to others. Take care.